Jeremy Grantham is famously known as the investor who predicted the 2000 dot com bubble and the 2008 housing market bubble, which helped him become one of the wealthiest people in the world. And he just came out and said that we are in a super bubble right now that hasn't even begun to burst. Now, to be fair, Jeremy isn't new to saying that we've been in some economic trouble. He's been saying that we've been in a super bubble for months now. The difference is that most recently on August 31st, he posted this paper to his website where he talked about how not only are we in a super bubble right now, but the super bubble hasn't even begun to burst. I read through his entire report, so let me start by giving you just a couple snippets of what he said, and then we'll dive into what this means and things that you need to be prepared for and things that you can do. He starts by saying that only a few market events in an investor's career really matter, and among the most important, are super bubbles. According to Jeremy, a super bubble is when you have prices that are even more out of whack than when you have an ordinary bubble. So think of it like a very big bubble. But he goes on to say that this particular super bubble that we're facing right now is unprecedentedly dangerous because we have a mix of cross asset overvaluation. So bonds, housing, and stocks are all critically overpriced and now rapidly losing momentum. And that coupled with a commodity shock and the Fed hawkishness, AKA the Federal Reserve Bank working to raise interest rates, all these things coming together mean that the bottom has yet to come. He then goes on to explain his theory of the four stages of a super bubble. The first stage is the bubble forms. Second, you have some sort of economic setback like we had at the beginning part of 2022. That was when we started to see the economy start to slow down. That was when the Federal Reserve Bank started to raise interest rates. And then you have number three, which is what we have been seeing recently, which is the bear market rally. And then fourth and finally, you have fundamentals deteriorate and then the market declines to a new low. He then goes on to back up what he says with some examples of previous super bubbles that have seen the exact same four stage pattern along with the bear market rally that we just saw in recent history. He starts by talking about the Great Depression in 1929 where there was a bear market rally where it was a 46 to 55% recovery, which then ultimately led to the big crash. He saw the same thing in 1973 where you had the bear market rally of 59% before it led to the big crash. We saw the same thing in the 2000 dot com bubble bursting, where the NASDAQ recovered 60% of their initial losses in just two months. And then we saw the bigger crash, and we saw the same thing happen now in 2022, according to him, where the S&P came back 58% off of their highs. And now he's saying that it's setting us up for now the big crash, according to him. Jeremy Grantham points to three different short-term factors that are contributing to the super bubble that can make the super bubble even worse. Now, these are all things that we have covered in Market Briefs. Market Briefs is my free financial newsletter. If you haven't joined Market Briefs yet, you should do so because the number one way, if you wanna have the best way to stay up to date on what's happening in the financial news, it is by actually reading the real reports. It's by reading the raw data, it's by studying the charts, it's by reading the actual reports that are published. That way you can read the information and then make your own unbiased opinions. If you don't wanna spend the time and effort to do all that, then the next best thing is to read something like Market Briefs, where my team is working every day to break down what's happening in things like the stock market, the real estate market, the crypto market, inflation, and the global economy. It is a completely free newsletter, and it's a fun and easy to read newsletter where you can read it in less than five minutes every morning. So if you wanna join Market Briefs, it's completely free, and I'll put the link to how you can do it down in the description. Hello. The first issue that he talks about is Russia when it comes to the energy crisis and the food crisis because that part of the world, the Russia and Ukraine part of the world, is known as the breadbasket of the world. They produce a lot of the world's wheat and crops. And so because they're having this war, many people are going to be facing food shortages. And on top of that, they're also a big producer of components of fertilizer that are now not being produced, which means less food for the world. The second issue that he talks about is China and their economic slowdown and the housing market slowdown. China is one of the most powerful economic countries in the world, and now their economy is facing a massive slowdown. And the third thing that he talks about in the short term is a shift in our economic climate. The first shift that he talks about has to do with the Federal Reserve Bank becoming more hawkish, aka wanting to now raise interest rates. That's changing the way that our economy is working, but also more on a political side. Right now, the presidential administration wants to move power away from the capital to the workers. That's what he says, where one of the things that they want to do is tax stock buybacks, and they want to move more power to the workers, which he said is good for the workers, but it's bad for stock investors. 
So these are the different things that he says that you need to be aware of in the short term. And in the long run, he has a few different things that you want to pay attention to. First has to do with the population shortage. He says that in the future, we're going to have to worry about not enough workers being out there because there's not enough people, while at the same time, we have a limited amount of supplies for the people that we do have. So as the population grows, he's saying it's not going to grow fast enough for productivity and growth in the economy, but our resources, our natural resources, can support all the growth in the population. The second thing that he talks about as a long-term major issue that you want to think about is climate change. He says that climate change is spiraling out of control because we're seeing some of the most dramatic and drastic shifts in climate change ever right now. And this is something that you want to be aware of for the long-term health, not just of our economy, but our world. He then goes on to end this article with a final paragraph that's titled An Epic Finale. The current super bubble features the most dangerous mix of these factors in modern times. All three major asset classes, housing, stocks, and bonds, with an inflation crisis on top of that. Now, while this is a very scary warning, let's also talk about the other side because there is a chance that he could be wrong. I mean, he hasn't always been right. He has also sometimes been very early. So this is where you have to understand that there is a chance that maybe he is not right. He even mentioned that in his own article. He goes on to say that if the bear market has already ended, then the parallels with the three other super bubbles that he talks about so far so strangely aligned would be completely broken. In other words, he doesn't think he's wrong. But he's saying that if he is wrong, that it's going to be very different from things that have happened in the past. And this is where he's studying history to predict what's happening in the future. Now, this is where you want to be smart financially with your own money and not panic, not get scared, because no good financial decision comes out of fear, panic, or anxiety. This is where you want to start getting financially educated and be prepared that way, no matter what happens, you can be able to take advantage of opportunities that may come your way. Because if you want my opinion, I really don't think that there's any way that we can sidestep or avoid a recession in this current economic climate that we're facing right now if we're not already in a recession. Why? Because we have such high inflation that now the Federal Reserve Bank is working to fight while our economy is slowing. This fight on inflation hurts the economy. Inflation is still near record highs. So if you really want to bring inflation down, you're going to have to inflict economic pain. The Federal Reserve Bank has openly talked about how they want to cool the housing market. They want to cool the stock market and they want to cool the labor market. All these things have consequences. And so you have to expect that if the Federal Reserve Bank is saying that they want to do this, there is going to be economic pain ahead. So what does that mean for you? Well, skinny scared, panicking, that doesn't do any good. Instead, you have to understand that recessions and market slowdowns create more opportunities than ever for financially educated and prepared investors. So what does that mean? Start putting aside cash. Just in case something bad happens, that way now you can come in and take advantage of opportunities that come your way and you get financially educated. Look for investments. What is it that you want to invest in? Is it real estate? Is it stocks? Is it startups? Is there something that you want to do? Do you have a business idea that you could potentially create? Look for the opportunities around you and then see how you can capitalize on them if that opportunity arises. If nothing bad happens, if the economy continues to grow and you're out of this economic slowdown without any sort of recession, without any sort of financial pain, great. Now you have a big bank account and you were prepared for nothing. Well, now you can take this big bank account, you can invest it, you can save it, you can pay down some debt, or you can go on a vacation. It's your choice. But if things bad do happen, well, now you have the cash and you have the education to go out and take advantage of an opportunity. So there's so much more upside to being prepared than if you're not prepared. Because if you don't prepare, all you have is downside. There's no upside to not being prepared. But there's so much downside and so much risk if you're not prepared, which is why you don't want to be scared about what's happening, but rather be prepared that we can take advantage of opportunities. Because while recessions and market crashes can hurt a lot of people, they can also make people very, very, very wealthy. And you want to decide which side of the equation that you want to be on. And that requires you to change what you're doing with your money today. Now, of course, if you want an easy way to stay up to date on what's happening, you can join Market Briefs. It's a free resource that I created, and I have the link for you down in the description below. Would you rather look rich or be rich? Because right now, the majority of people are trying to look rich, which is keeping them away from actually becoming rich. And, you know, it's not that difficult of a concept to grasp. I think we all know that if you stopped buying nice things and you invested it instead, you'd become wealthier over the long term. But it's difficult 